You're listening to another life-transforming message from Awakened Church with campuses in San Diego and Salt Lake City. To find out more about us, go to awakenchurch.com. Welcome to Awakened Church. I'm Pastor Jürgen Matesius. I'm so thrilled that you're tuning in today. And boy, do I have a word from the Lord for you. So come with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. Wherever you are right now, if you're eating waffles and fried chicken or having a a lunch feast together, or you're just fasting, believing God for breakthrough, wherever you are right now, silence everything, lean in for the next 20, 25 minutes, because I promise you, the word that you're going to hear is going to carry you through, all the way through the Bible, whenever there's a crisis, whenever there's a famine, whenever there's a situation, it was God sending His word that carried people through that carry people through. So come with me, Mark chapter five is a powerful story. Jesus has just crossed over the Sea of Galilee again after casting the legion out of a very, very demonized, very troubled man. He's crossed back over and he's, he's gotten off at the shore and immediately Jairus, one of the rulers of the synagogue, has come up to Jesus. He's got a 12-year-old daughter who is terribly ill. She's literally lying at death's door. And Jairus begs him as the ruler of the synagogue, please, Jesus, would you come and lay your hands on her? And Jesus says, I'll come. On the way, as Jesus is walking to Jairus' home, the Bible Bible says there's also a, a, an older woman who for the last 12 years has been hemorrhaging blood. She's been bleeding for 12 years. This renders her unclean. Uh, she's an outcast not only in the community, but she's isolated because she is not allowed to go into the temple. She's not allowed to go and worship. Her infirmity and her flow has isolated her. Very, very similar to what we're experiencing today with this pandemic around the world. But the Bible says when she she heard about Jesus. That's why it's so important that, that even though we can't gather together in the house physically on a Sunday, we're going to gather right now online because when people hear about Jesus, faith rises up. And as they reach out and touch Jesus, you will find a supernatural power flows from heaven. It's not contained to the buildings of earth. It flows from heaven. And when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, immediately she was healed. The Bible says, Jesus turned around and says, who touched me? And the disciples are like, what are you talking about? Everyone's touching you. People are thronging you from everywhere. He said, I'm not thronging. Somebody touched me with intention. Someone touched me with faith. Your faith, and this is our assignment today, is to put faith in you because your faith is literally like a lightning rod where God's power can land. So we want to put faith in you to carry you through this pandemic. And the Bible says, Jesus turned around and says, Oh daughter, your faith has made you whole. Well, we know from reading the story, it wasn't her faith. It was Jesus's power. But Jesus's Power was resident in Christ, but it flowed to where a woman touched in faith. So Jesus was telling her the truth. Your faith, darling, drew my power into your life. I want you to have faith by the end of this message. The title of this message is Believing Power. Now let's pick up the reading in chapter 35, just after Jesus says, your faith has made you well. In verse 35, it says, while Jesus was still speaking... Some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? God bless friends like that. God bless the friends like that who are the pessimistic, half glass full people. Why trouble the teacher any further? Let me just tell you this. Jesus was a magnificent teacher, but don't you dare reduce him to just a teacher. Jesus did teach. In fact, his teaching still today rocks my world. His teaching still today has uh, basically created the backbone of Western civilization. Our laws, our courts, our morality, our ethics, everything is shaped on the teachings of Jesus Christ. He was a magnificent teacher, but don't you dare just put him in the bath 
ask it that he was a teacher only. Not only was he a teacher, he was a healer. Not only was he a healer, he was a deliverer. Not only was he a deliverer, he was an atoner. Not only was he an atoner, he was a savior. Not only was he a savior, he was a king. He was a priest. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the risen savior. He's the champion of champions. I want you to, to know right now that he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's the fourth man in the fiery furnace and he's the one right now walking with you. He is the good shepherd. The, sh- the sheep know his voice and he leads them out and he leads them into everlasting life. So Jesus immediately, as soon as he has heard this in verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard this word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. I want to talk to you today about believing power. Believing power. The ruler of the synagogue gets a report, your daughter has expired. Beep, 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 beep. She's flatlined, she's dead. She's (sighs) breathed her last, she's expired. It looks like it's over. The negative report comes from friends. The negative report comes from people that, and you need to understand when people speak to you, they will always speak to you out of their revelation of faith. They will always speak to you out of their revelation of reality and a, and a God reality. These people, once someone is dead, once someone's breathed their last, all hope is gone. But I need you to understand that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And what you need to do in times like this is you need to lean in and hear a word from people that have a little bit of a higher faith, a little bit of a higher belief system. Thank God you tuned into Awakened Church. So Jesus immediately, when He hears this word coming from the people, refuses to let this be the word that this man lives under. He says to Jairus, don't let that be the script. Don't let that be the narrative. Don't let that be the commentary for how this story is going to end. Jesus turns to him and says, do not be afraid, only believe and your daughter will be made well. Now let me tell you the difference between fear and faith. Fear is believing something you can't see will happen. You know, when you, when you were young, if the lights were out, you didn't dare kind of put your foot on the floor because the boogeyman under the bed would reach out and grab your foot. You knew you had to somehow try and turn the light on and then because the light disintegrates the boogeyman and then you find a walk on the floor. Oh, okay, maybe that was just me. But fear is believing something you can't say. Oh my gosh, I've got a lump. It's a lump. Maybe it's a tumor. Maybe it's a cancer. Oh my God. Fear is believing something you can't see will happen. It's so different to faith. Faith is is believing something you can't see will happen. It's so different to fear. Fear is believing something you can't see will happen. So different to faith. Faith is believing something you can't see will happen. I want you to notice they're both exactly the same, except one is negative and one is positive. The Bible says the righteous, the just, shall live by faith. Faith is believing something you can't see will happen. Let me say this. You were created, you were designed, you were fashioned by God to bear His image and His likeness. So you were created to believe something you can't see will happen. When God said, let there be light, there was no light in the universe This is before stars, this is before sun, this is before moon. There was no, everything was pitch black. If you were there in the cosmos, if you were there in the galaxy with God, at the time when God said, let there be light, there was no light to speak of. There was no light for you even to comprehend or for you to contextualize the very, very words that God was saying. But God Himself believes something He can't see will happen. That's the essence of God. God created you to believe something you can't see will happen. Now, let me just say this. The devil wants to use a thing called fear to hijack your wiring, to hijack your imagination, to hijack your heart, to hijack your believing system. When the Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear, there's a reason it says that. Because God knows that fear will arrest your believing system so that you now begin to exercise that same wiring, but in a negative. 
Will you stop believing something you can't see? We're going to correct the, contract the coronavirus. We're all going to die. Oh, our business is going to go under. Man, we go, we're going to have to file bankruptcy. Everything. He, he, the devil wants to send a spirit of fear to you in times of tribulation, in times of uncertainty, in times of tumult. He wants to send a spirit of fear to get you to believe for the negative. But I want you to know that God is good in famine, that God is perfectly at home in crises, in pestilence. All the way through the Bible, you will find that God is victorious again and again and again. And I want you to know that God has not given you a spirit of fear. So like Pastor Leanne says, when fear comes knocking, let faith answer the door. When fear comes knocking, let just make a decision today. You know what, devil? You can keep your fear. I'm going to faith. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. As you go to the Word of God, you will begin to find the faith rises and you start believing something you can't. Man, I can't see how we're going to make it through, but we're going to make it through. I can't see how these symptoms, gonna, but these symptoms are going to dissipate. Man, I can't see how our business is going to, your business is going to recover. Your business is going to flourish. Everything's going to work out. You will find the power of God is going to come upon you and upon your life. You know, they say there are two powerful motivations in life. That there, there are two things that, that help us to, to motivate. The second one is the prospect of gain. People invest in the stock market, people invest in business, people buy a property and develop a property because of the prospect of gain. I remember courting my beautiful Leanne and the motivation was the prospect of gain. But unfortunately, psychology tells us that this is not motivation number one. The prospect of gain is not motivation number one, it's number two. The number one greatest motivator for human beings, unfortunately, is the fear of loss, is the fear of loss. So many people don't take risks, they don't step out in faith because ever since Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, we now lean into the fear of loss. The fear of loss. Most people never leave that job. They, they, They never answer the call to go to Bible school. They, they, they never begin to tithe. They don't step out in faith because of a fear of loss. Well, well, well hang on, aren't I, I better just holding on to what I have? I read, read how they used to catch chimpanzees and monkeys and they would hollow out a, a coconut and they'd put a fruit in there. And when the monkey would reach its hand in and grab the fruit, it couldn't, with a fist closed with the fruit in there, it couldn't get its hand back out of the thing and so it would be trapped. And this thing, even though all it had to do, this chimpanzee was let go and it could get its hand out, it would escape. It wouldn't because the fear of loss so overwhelmed it. When the devil came to Adam and Eve, he was trying to dismantle the Word of God. He said, has God really said? Has God really said? God said, don't eat off that tree and the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. But now the devil comes, he says, has God really said? I want you to know you're losing by not eating. And when they took and ate, their eyes were open. And ever since that time, the human condition has been prone to where the fear of loss has overwhelmed us. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this in my own life. When we came to San Diego, started this church, I remember the devil said, man, you're going to fail. You are going to fail. Nobody knows you're here. You should never have left Australia. And I remember just this wash of fear and anxiety overwhelm me. The, the $100,000 we put on our mortgage, it's gonna be gone. My wife, my three little boys, everything's gonna be a mess and this fear of loss. But then the Holy Spirit came and said, Jürgen, I didn't call you here to fail. And I didn't call you to go to a land where people knew your name. I don't build the church on your name. I build the church on my name. And then all of a sudden again, I was able to just shun that faith comes. Don't, don't give in to the spirit of fear. One of the saddest things that I've seen is is people out of a fear of loss stay trapped in bad relationships, stay trapped in bad marriages. I remember one time being in an emergency room and a woman walked in and her eye was almost swollen shut and her her lip was all bruised and, and it was very, very easy to see that she was the victim of domestic violence. And as the doctors spoke and they, they brought the police in and as they ministered to her wounds and the police came, all of a sudden she flipped and started making excuses 
for her drunk husband, making excuses. Oh, well, I was a little bit lippy. Oh, I was. And what I realized, it's so, so perplexed me that she would defend this man. I realized she was living out of a fear of loss. Like, where will I go? How will I live? How will I? Maybe, do you know how many people settle for, for less than God's best because of a fear of loss? You don't need to live in a fear of loss. I'm talking today about believing power. You can transition to a place where the Bible says, do not be afraid, only believe. Don't go to fear, believing something negative, something bad will happen. Go to faith right now. Go to faith right now. Believe something you can't see will happen. You are created to do that. You were created. God comes to a, a man called Abram when he was 99 and his wife 89. And God says to him, this time next year, Sarai, your wife, will be conceive in her womb and she will bring forth a child. You better believe that Abraham for the last 25 years has been asking God, has been asking God, has been believing God for for a son. And it just looked impossible. It looked absolutely impossible. In fact, not just for the last 25 years, for the last 25 years, God had been promising before that, ever since they first caught it, ever since they first got married, they were believing for family. They were believing for a son, but Sarai was barren. But God comes to him and says, you change your name from Abram to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah, because my breath is coming in you and I want you to operate in faith. I want you to believe that something you can't see will happen. And he takes Abraham out and gets him to count the the, the stars in the sky if he was able. Because God is trying to say, son, it's not a problem with Sarah's womb. It is a problem with you seeing, with you believing something you can't see will happen. Happen. I'm trying to unlock a mechanism on the inside of you. God comes to Joshua in Joshua chapter 6, and they're looking at a wall, an impregnable wall that goes around a city called Jericho. This thing has had the greatest architects. It's had the greatest engineers fortify this compound so that it looks impossible, so it looks impregnable. And God says to Joshua, Joshua, see, I've given Jericho into your hand. It's king and it's mighty men of valor will be delivered over to you. If you looked at it, it, this thing looked impossible. But God always takes us from fear into faith. God takes us and, and unleashes and unlocks that believing power that something you can't see will happen. And so So the Bible says Joshua begins to believe that something he couldn't see will happen, that the walls are going to come down, that the king's going to be groveling for his life, and that the mighty men of valor in that city are going to be vanquished, that they're going to be bound and they're going to be begging for their life, begging for a merciful death from the hands of Joshua. All the way through the Scriptures, we see it again and again and again. We see that the children of Israel, after 400 years of bondage and slavery, the Word of the Lord still came. I'm going to deliver you from Egypt. I'm going to deliver you from Egypt. I'm going to send a deliverer. I'm going to send a deliverer. They had to go to the place where they had to believe that something they couldn't see will happen. When the spies went across the Jordan River, Ten spies came back with a negative report. Why was it a negative report? Because they looked at the giants of the land. To them, the giants were bigger than their God. Man, i got to tell you, how sad is that? Their God, who delivered them from 400 years of slavery, their God, who brought them out with a mighty hand, their God that did signs and wonders in Egypt, their God that opened up the Red Sea, their God that caused them to walk across on dry, dry ground, their God that then drowned the entire Egyptian army, their God that fed them with manna, their God that brought a river out of a rock, this same God. All of a sudden they crossed the Jordan and 10 spies look and they see the sons of Anak. They see that the giants are stronger than them. When your eye is on the pestilence, when your eye is on the virus, when your eye is on the reports, when your eye is on the doom and gloom of the economy, when your eye is on the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, when your eye is on the stock market, when your eye is on the circumstances, absolutely, you're going to come to a place where, oh my gosh, 
I am believing something I can't see will happen in the negative. Can I tell you, our job here at Awaken Church is to get your eyes on Christ. Get your eyes on God. You need to understand that your God is all powerful. He is not shaken by the flood. He is not shaken by the earthquake. He is not shaken by the famine. He is not shaken by the pestilence. He sits on the throne far above all of those things. And His power is undiluted. His power still flows, but it flows towards faith. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Only believe. We're talking about believing power. As you shift your dish, as you begin to move and begin to believe that with God, all things are possible. Two spies, Joshua and Caleb said, what are you talking about? Their protection has departed from them. They are our bread. They are our food. Let us go up at once. If God delights in us, we are well able to take it. What was it? What was happening? They had faith in God. They knew that their God was big. When David walked in to the valley, where Goliath was standing in the bottom of that valley. Everybody looked and thought that poor kid, he's going down to his death. What a brave kid. What a way to go out. But so tragic, so young, 16 years of age. And now he's about to to be destroyed by a nine foot nine undefeated Philistine champion. But the Bible says when David walked into that valley, he pointed at Goliath and says, you put your trust in your sword, in your spear and in your javelin. Let me tell you, notice I am pretty much unarmed and notice I have no armour on, no protection because let me tell you where my faith is. My faith is in the Lord my God and this day He is going to deliver you into my hand and I will take your head from your body and I'll feed your carcass to the beasts of the field and to the birds of the air so the whole world may know that there's a God in Israel. David saw that Goliath wasn't the giant, that Goliath wasn't the biggest man in the battle. David saw that his God was. David believed something he couldn't see would happen, that that day, Goliath, his head would be in David's hand. Now the Bible says there was no sword in David's hand. There was no, so how is, how is he going to take his head? He's got five smooth stones. What, is he going to rub his head off? No, no, no. David was prophesying. David was speaking. This is a time not to speak out of fear. This is a time not to speak out of hopelessness. And this is a time. Do not put your amen with the script of this world. Do not put your amen with the hopelessness that is in this world. Anybody would have grabbed David and says, what are you talking about? How are you going to take his head? You don't even have a sword. The next verse says, there's no sword in David's hand. How are you going to do this? David was prophesying. You need to understand that you need to speak your way into being. Shoot arrows into your future. Begin to prophesy over your business. Our business is going to recover. This year, we're going to make double for our trouble. This year, the Lord is going to restore to us sevenfold for everything that we lost. Whatever we've lost in the shutdown, whatever we We've lost in our restaurants, whatever we've lost in our business, it's coming back. Press down, shaking together, running over. We're not going to shrink back. We're not going to stop tithing. We're not going to stop giving. We're not going to stop sowing in a season of famine. We're going to come. The Bible says, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. You better believe it. They shall come again rejoicing, carrying their sheaves with them. Unlock the power of God. Don't look to the world. Don't look to the famine. Don't look to the earth. Don't look to the cursed ground. Look to the open heaven. Look to God. What you need now more than anything is an open heaven above your life. Bring your tithe into the storehouse and open the windows of heaven. Begin to shoot prophecies. Begin to speak. God comes to a woman in Isaiah 54. She's barren. She's been unable to bear children, unable to conceive and bring forth babies. And God says to her, sing, O barren, sing. For more are the children of the desolate woman than her is with husband. What's he saying? What you sing about, you bring about. Don't sing the songs of hopelessness. Don't sing the songs of helplessness. Sing the songs of faith. Sing the songs of blessing. Sing the songs of breakthrough. Sing the songs of the waymaker. Sing the songs of a God who is with you, who is for you, who can open windows of heaven, who can put a baby in your womb, who can bless your finances, who can bless you. You don't need to go down to Egypt. You can stay in the land. You can stay in that land, the land where the famine is, where the famine is at its peak, and you can sow in that land because one man sowing with God, one man unleashing the principles of God. God does not need favourable circumstances for His power to work. When God said, let there be light, there was not even a sun for four days. God don't need no help for His Word to come to pass. His Word has its own generator. His Word has its own power. What are you speaking? What is flowing out of your mouth? Speak the Word of God. Declare the Word of God. 
No weapon formed against me shall prosper. God makes a distinction in the land of Goshen where the Israelites were dwelling. When there was darkness on the land, there was light in Goshen. When the Bible says, when all the cattle were struck with pestilence, not one sheep, not one oxen, not one donkey in Goshen was touched. The Bible says, when there was a blight and a mildew and all the crops and all the crops were done, not one blight, not one mildew was on any of the crops in Goshen in the land of Egypt because the Lord makes a distinction. When God sent hail, literally the, 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 the size of squash from heaven that was smashing and devouring the crops and, and destroying barns, not one piece of hail fell on the land of Goshen because your God makes a distinction. I need you to understand. I need you to understand. By faith, we're in the family of God. The Israelites, by birth, were in the family of God. If you are born again, now by faith, you're in the family of God and God can make a distinction. Psalm 91, a thousand may fall at your right hand, 10,000 in the noonday, but it shall not come near you. You shall only observe with your eyes because you've made the secret place of the Most High your dwelling. When you dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, there's something about just the shadow of God that brings supernatural protection. We see this in the New Testament where Peter walks down the street and just his shadow falling on the sick, just his shadow falling on the lame, just his shadow falling on the infirm. There was a power in that shadow, the anointing, the presence of God. We're calling you to be a believer and understand that you were created to unlock believing power. Do not let fear arrest you. Do not let fear take you down a dark path where you believe something you can't see will happen. It's probably all gonna go out. No, 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 no. Don't you dare, don't you dare speak the language of this world. The language of this world is fear, death and hopelessness. The language of the kingdom is faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. That's the language of the kingdom. Paul said these three remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. We love you too much to just echo the empty, hollow, bankrupt, vanquished defeatism of the spirit that is in the world. We want you to understand that in this time, there is a voice from heaven. There is a word undiluted undisputed in its power, the Word of the living God. We're going to be broadcasting that to you morning and evening. You're going to get that Word. That Word is going to go into your spirit. You're not going to go to fear. You're going to go to faith. You're going to believe something you can't see will happen. Honey, I don't see how we're going to make it through, but I just believe God is good. I believe that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills as well as a thousand hills where the cattle are grazing. I believe that God controls the windows of heaven. He can pour out so much blessing from heaven. Governments can't tax it and our barns can't contain it. God wants to pour out blessing over your life. Go to faith. Go to faith. Believe the Word of God. Something you can't see will happen and it's going to be good. Right now, I want to pray for you. Maybe you're out there today and you're away from God. Friend, I'm telling you, this is not a time to be away from God. This is not a time to be far from God. Come into the land of God. Come into Goshen. Come into the distinction. Come into the favour. Come into the blessing of God. Come into the supernatural protection of the living God. I've been a Christian for 34 years. I don't follow God because I need a crutch to get through life. I follow God because His power, His grace, His protection, His provision, His goodness has undergirded my life. From when I left to go to Bible school and my father said to me, not one cent, not one cent will you get from me to support you. And I remember fear gripping my heart, tried to take me down a road of believing something I can't see will happen. You're going to lose everything. You know, you, you, you're not going to be able to pay your bills. You, you're going to do, you, you're going to fail miserably. It's, it's all doom and gloom. Instead, the Word of the Lord came to me. If your mother and father forsake you, then the Lord will take care of me. Then the Lord will take care of me. For 34 years, I've seen this God take care of me. And I know that God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't love me any more than He loves you. But let me tell you something that maybe nobody told you. While God is no respecter of persons, 100%, the Bible tells us that. God is a respecter of principles. Let me just say that again. God is no respecter of persons, but He is a respecter of His principles. God is looking for one man, one woman, that will believe His Word, that will stand on His Word, and that will release a canopy over you to bring supernatural protection. If you're outside of Christ, 
I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Just close your eyes. Maybe you're away from God. Maybe you once walked with God. Maybe you grew up in a religious home or maybe you were turned off by religion. Friend, just understand, Jesus didn't die on a cross because He felt like the world needed more religion. That's not why He died. In fact, Jesus died on a cross to put an end to religion, to restore a broken and severed relationship between you and God so that you could know God and that God could know you and be, be in you walking with you. So maybe you're away from God, far from God, whatever. Pray this prayer. Say these words out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to You right now and I ask You to forgive me of all Your sin. I ask You right now to come into my heart. I thank You that You died on the cross for me. And when You died on that cross, I was completely delivered from all the power of the enemy, completely forgiven of all my sin and wrongdoing. Today I am a child of God. In Jesus' Name, Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to do this. I want you to get your phone out and I want you to text, I responded. I responded to 555-888. 555-888, I responded. And we're gonna help you. No matter where you are, you text us that. We're gonna get some stuff to you. We've got a great book written by one of the powerhouses in our church, Pastor Samuel Juth, called Following Jesus. We're gonna get you that and a whole bunch of other stuff. We just love you. But you know, as I come to a close right now, would you let me pray over you? Maybe you're struggling with fear. Maybe you're struggling with your faith. Maybe you're struggling with all the the doom and the gloom and the news and the negative reports and... Let me just tell you something about the news media. The news media sadly care more about their narrative and agenda than they do the American people, than they do the people. And some of them, some of them, not all of them, some of them are trying to exploit this because all they care is about political points. Don't listen to that. Listen to the Word of God. Let the Word of God be your calm. Let the Word of God be your certainty. Let the Word of God be your reassurance. Father, I declare right now, anybody that has sickness, anybody that has disease, anybody that has been diagnosed with the coronavirus, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over their bodies now. I command that virus, you do as I say. You are bound, you retract and you depart. I said you retract and you depart from their bodies. I drive out that virus in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ. I break its grip. Devil, fear, anxiety, hopelessness, I break your grip, I bind you, depart from their lives in Jesus' Name. Those who are facing crippling financial loss, I declare right now in the Name of Jesus Christ, for the supernatural windows of heaven be open over their life. Do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. Believe that what you can't see will happen. Man, I can't see how God, God is. God is a God who is a God of breakthrough. He's a God of healing. He's a God of deliverance. He's a God of prosperity. He's a God of salvation. He's a God of transformation. You better believe He's been doing it for thousands and thousands of years. In fact, God has been doing God since God was God and God has always been God. He doesn't know how to do fail. He doesn't know how to do hopelessness. He doesn't know how to do struggle. All He knows how to do is turn defeat into victory, how to turn famine into feast, how to turn pestilence into breakthrough. It's what He does. It's what He does. It's what He does. Come on, if you believe that, give God a great amen. Come on, give Him a praise. Give Him a hallelujah. Father, we bless You. We thank You. Lord, bless these beautiful people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. We love you. Tune in again with us. We're going to put a faith shut in your arm. You're going to go to a whole new level. We're going to get through this. Come out the other side victorious in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.